Hey, how's it going everyone? It's me, It's Count, here with a brand new Pokemon Go video. So Niantic announced what the next Community Day is going to be, and it's going to feature none other than the Grass and Flying type Pokemon, Hopip. Now I actually think there's a lot to be excited about with this particular Community Day, and I do think that it's very interesting that Niantic is going to be trying out some new features for Community Day with this particular Pokemon. So yeah, we're going to be talking about all of that in today's video, so let's roll the intro and jump right into it. Alright, so in case you were wondering what the February Community Day is going to be, it is going to feature the flying and grass type Pokemon Hopip. Now on the surface, this may seem very underwhelming considering that Jumpluff, which is of course the evolved version of Hopip, is not necessarily that relevant in the Go Battle League as well as with Raid Battles, but actually with the Community Day move, it definitely changes things for this Pokemon. But before we dive into that, let's get into the brass tacks with this community day. First and foremost, it's going to be happening on February 12, 2022, starting from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time. It's the standard times for community day, so you do not have to worry about it being shorter than usual. And there are a couple of bonuses that you will definitely want to utilize during this particular event. There are, of course, the standard bonuses that you typically will see with Community Days, more specifically with 3-hour lures and incense durations, but we're also going to be getting 3 times Catch Stardust with this particular Community Day. Now, this is very important because we do not get this particular bonus with Community Days very often, but every time you do utilize these bonuses, you will get a huge bump to your Stardust count. So make sure you farm up all of your Pokeballs and make sure you are well prepared because you do not want to miss out on this particular bonus, even if you do not care about Hopip as a Pokemon. But I actually think this is one particular Community Day you will want to focus on, and that is of course because the Community Day move is going to be Acrobatics. This is going to be a flying type charge attack for Jumpluff, and it actually might make a huge difference in the Great League of the Go Battle League. The reason why I say that is because Jumpluff may become the new Tropius with this move. Of course, Tropius, for any player who has access to that particular Pokemon, is a very powerful Pokemon in the Great League. Considering that the Grass Typing and the Flying Typing is a very powerful combination, and of course because it has some great stats and some very powerful charge moves. But when it comes to Jump Pluff, even though it has the same typings, it is actually not comparable to Tropius because of those charge attacks, but now that it is getting a much stronger charge attack compared to Aerial Ace, this might actually be a Pokemon that you could bring to the Great League and find some very big success. The base damage has already been added to the game files and it is going to be 110 damage but we do not know what the energy cost is going to be, but regardless, this is going to be a huge upgrade to Aerial Ace, making this Pokemon a very strong pick for the Great League. Jumpluff may not necessarily have a huge impact when it comes to raid battles, but if you are serious about PvP, then this is a must-have Pokemon. Now I mentioned earlier that Niantic is going to be trying out something new with spawn behaviors with this particular Community Day, and I actually think this is a really cool idea. So. What Niantic is planning to do is have a new feature to this community day where you will be able to get more XL candies for catching Hopip if you are catching them in parks. And when you are catching them in parks, you may actually come across a lot of skip plumes as well. If this ends up becoming a very successful mechanic, I do think it's going to have some very positive implications for the future of Pokemon Go, especially because if you think about it, they really haven't done too much with biomes and habitats, and they really haven't fulfilled their full potential, mainly because they're only being used right now for diversity of spawns. But because with every event we have a similar number of spawns in every spawn pool, it's really become obsolete to have different biomes and different habitats. Habitats. So if they were to do something a little bit more intentional with these different habitats, I think that could be a really cool thing. More specifically, if you were to catch certain Pokemon in their respective habitats, then you should be able to collect some kind of bonus when it comes to candies and Stardust or experience. That would be a really cool thing for Pokemon Go. 
So I'm really curious to see how this is going to end up working out. If it ends up becoming very popular, then yes, you could definitely see something like this being added to community days, but also in-game events in the future. Speaking of extra candies, if you want to utilize a Mega Evolution in order to collect extra candies per catch, then make sure you Mega Evolve either a Venusaur, a Bama Snow, Charizard Y, Pidgeot, or Aerodactyl during this community day. Getting extra candies is going to be very clutch because even if you get the most ideal PvP IVs for this particular Pokemon, you will still need to collect XL candies in order to break level 40 in order to get it as close as possible to 1500 combat points. Speaking of which, the ideal PvP IVs for Jumpluff is going to be 0, 14, and 14, and you will get it as close as possible to 1500 combat points if you get it to level 43 with these IVs. This is the one you will want to target during this particular community day, and of course, unfortunately for Hundo collectors, this is not one particular Pokemon that's going to make a huge difference in raid battles even with this new community day move, so getting a Hundo for this particular Pokemon is going to be more of a collector's item. So yeah, to give a recap for this particular community day, it's going to be one of those Pokemon that's going to create a huge impact for the Great League, so you do not want to miss out on that if you are someone who is very active in the Go Battle League. And then of course, this is going to be a three times catch Stardust community day, which is of course going to give you a huge boost in your Stardust count. And of course, Stardust is the most important resource in this game, so you will definitely want to make sure you grind out as hard as possible for this particular community day. And then of course finally, they are going to be trying out something new with spawn behaviors, so if you are able to go out and play in a park, you will be able to utilize some special new bonuses and collect more XL candies. And yes, that is going to be important because you will need to level this Pokemon past level 40 in order to use it in the Great League. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed this breakdown and found it to be helpful. Leave your thoughts regarding this community day down below in the comments section. Let's have a great discussion. And of course, to the eyes of so many players, Hophip is a trash Pokemon, but because of this Community Day move, it could actually become a very relevant Pokemon. But let me know how you plan to play this Community Day. Are you going to be grinding it out for the Stardust, or are you going to be targeting a PvP IV Hophip? Definitely let me know. And if you ended up liking this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, and make sure you subscribe for more Pokemon Go videos just like this one, and don't forget that little bell as well. And I am Count Jinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I will catch you all later.